And you know what? I'm going to talk about math. I understand if you have stomach ache or start to cry. I, it wasn't my best subject when I was in primary school, so I understand you, I feel you guys. So, <laughs> Because math, there are a lot of contradictions depending on what you master in the subject. It's hell, it's heaven, it's hate and love, and it's idiot and smart. Do you relate, people? Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to start to share with you some of my treasures that I, collect, uh, that I collected in my career. The confessions from uh, my students. And the first one, Some confession from a student of mine. And let's say, you see, <laughs> how cool is mathematics? <laughs> mathematics is like the tallest mountain in the world, almost impossible for me to climb over. Since I have a fear of heights, that is what I feel with mathematics. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I want to conquer mathematics. Who invented mathematics? I want to seek his grave. Oh, my God. A student and a mother of two children. And the other one, the second one is even much better. It's talking about another student spoke to me what he thinks a math teacher can do wrong. And we do a lot of wrong, we math teacher. Do you agree, girl? Yeah? Like this one. <laughs> All right. uh, mathematics. Uh, I just noted what the science student said. The teacher is too smart. He takes everything for granted. He thinks we understand everything. He is teaching too fast, making it easier to follow. He explains what to do and not why and how. He takes the pen and solves the task for me. <laughs> this task is not giving me anything. Shit. Do you relate, people? <laughs> yeah. Do you, did you have this math teacher in your class? Raise your hand. Oh my Lord. <laughs> we are doing a, a fucking job here. <laughs> <laughs> what a reflected and honest teenager. Teacher, let us drop. Is, is, is there any teacher here in the room? No, yeah. <laughs> my girls. <laughs> what a reflected and honest teenager. Teacher, let us drop these seven points, please. Is it not a nice reminder on Saturday? And now, I'm going to give you a, a math task. How many quadrangle angles do you see in this picture, this star, or squares? Do you see any squares here, actually? Is this math? Can you relate this to math? Is fun math? I am not going to tell you now. I'm going to tell you the secret after I'm finished today. <laughs> so, and the second one, this sequence. Do you recognize this sequence? Any one of you, do you recognize it? Yep. You find it in the nature, in the vegetables, in stairs, that going round and round. What do you think the next number is? Eight. See the beauty of math. One plus one is two. One plus two is three. Two plus, uh, two plus three is five. Three plus five is eight. And, and so on and so on. Do you know what the name of this sequence? Fibonacci sequence. And you know what? Isn't beautiful? This is math, but we never learn about this in school. Why? So, uh, we have in Norway today new curriculum. And I was uh, for two weeks ago in the Norwegian school in Malaga, and I had a lot of good experience there. In line with the new renewal of the curriculum that comes into force in force in 2020, the Norwegian school in Malaga is one is on the way to turn the school structure upside down. 
with extended use of project that includes studying from several subjects. The teaching process is more detached from the textbook and has a clear focus on the competence the students are left with. Through the project, the learning goals are brought into a whole and are put in context with each other, resulting into the students receiving a lasting knowledge and a richer abilities for reflection. We have not a lot of reflection in the classroom, and especially in math classes. It the best, it the worst reflection in the day is math classes. The world is not divided in two subjects. Do you agree with me? Or it is? Yeah. And the school should be the same way, I think. And they are working with something. It's how many uh, of you that uh, who uh, uh, adore chocolate? Me, I'm a chocolate lover. Come, come on, raise your hand. Nice. <laughs> and they are working with something very cool, pretty cool, that called the Chocolate Project. And they are making like a greenhouse for competence growth. The project has some practical lessons. The Chocolate Project deals with everything from cultivation, greenhouse, construction, programming of irrigation system, advertising, sustainable development, writing, language, math, and chemistry. A large amount of learning goals from these subjects are interwinned and put together in a practical and realistic context. And that's what we need in school today. Like this. From Fusion 360 to making a model and make it practical in a practical context. And I think that can help students to stay relevant and to like math, actually. And you know what? The group is now building the greenhouse. They have previously designed and made the model, as you have seen there. They also have programmed different control programs for controlling uh, irrigation and temperature. A student in front of me broke the code about Pythagoras. How many he here who hate Pythagoras? Raise your hand. Do you understand actually how it works? But when I was there in Spain, those students, they could understand how it worked because it was practical and a relevant context. So you see here, a student in front of me broke the code about Pythagoras using planks and angles. This is, this is the way to go because the world is not divided into subjects. And because math is a part of a large picture, math is a pair, because you know what, before I go to this point, how many of you who work with Pythagoras like this? Raise your hand. It's really sad because Pythagoras is also like this. But we learn it usually in school like this, 20 similar tasks like this. It's so boring. It's fucking boring. And we have to stop it. And so I think that this is the way to go because the world is not divided into subject and because math is part of a large picture. Math is a pair of glasses to see and interpret the world with. We have a lot of glasses in our world and math is one of them. Numbers is one of them to analyze and to see the world through them. So I think we, math teachers, you girls, we have, we should always create the three M's in our math classes. Motivation, mastery, and magic. Remember so those three M's. See with me. Motivation, motivation, mastery, and magic. And I always see to my colleagues, math colleagues, I'm going around and I give a lot of lecture every year and I say to my colleagues, congratulations on being a math teacher. Congratulations, it's the coolest job in the world. But why? I'll show you why now. <laughs> because I'm a math teacher by day and a rock star by night. <laughs> and my job 
is very funny one, very important one. I'm creating skills, motivation, reflection, fellowship, inspiration, learning, and curiosity. Damn curiosity! We have to worship curiosity in pupils because it's our future. It's not about memorizing formulas or giving them the same shape. It's about problem solving and patterns, like the Fibonacci pattern that we enjoyed now. So our job is not like this. We are not going to work like this. It's not our job. It's not the policy we have in Norway or anywhere in the world. And I think that in the time when a 16 years old from Sweden, Greta Thunberg, managed to mobilize the whole world. Anyway, uh, in the Stortinga, Ferran Stortinga, it was almost 40,000 young people, proud young people, reflect, uh, who has a lot of reflection. In this time when a 16 years old from Sweden, Greta Thunberg, managed to mobilize the whole world to combat cl cl climate change. We can no longer count percentage tasks with socks and jackets. Come on. <laughs> Soon we have to teach the pupils in our class to calculate percentage in plastic in the sea. It's relevant. It's important. And how much energy we are able to provide with nuclear, nuclear power pla plants. Because our goal is sustain sustainable development at those 17 goals. Do you agree? It's the, those goals we are preparing our pupils to. So we have to change our pra pra practicing in the classroom. Do you agree with me? And I think if they are going to have a cli climate action, live below water, live on land, peace, everything here, you have to learn numbers and how to use them in practical context. You have to understand. It doesn't help only to memorize formulas in mathematics. And now, back to our problems. I didn't uh, forget how many quadrangles have do we have here? I give you, I have a little bit time now, so I give you some minutes to us. You can talk together like I do with my students. I like to make them discuss and think together communicate together to find the best solutions. You can talk together now in two minutes. Come on. Yes. T 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Who has a solution for me? Come on. <laughs> it's OK to try. Come on. Five. Yes. Five. five. You are, uh, yeah, yeah, not bad, not bad, <laughs> not bad. We have a smart kid here, yes, <laughs> yes. Any more, any other uh, solutions? I'll tell you what, it's 10 people actually. Do you know why? Because what is, what is square, what is quadrangle? It's four sides. It hasn't to look like a square, it's four sides. I, and if you understand this, so can you find those 10? Do you understand what I try to say hi here? The flexibility to think, the flexibility to see, the flexibility to understand. So you have a lot of flexibility. It's good, good sign. <laughs> so I'm finishing my talk today by thanking Ted Uyo for inviting me today. It's an honor for me. And I have a Michael Jackson outfit today because it's very cool to talk about math, moonwalk. <laughs> 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 and I 
very proud, very proud that I am a nerd and I am math teacher by day and rock star by night. <laughs> Thank you.